sings the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his whole holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. She's at home listening, and uh, I just, I have a rare opportunity in my family line to have so many generations before me that have taught the next woman in line, my great-grandma, my grandma, my mom, myself, my children, and so I just feel like um, I have been so blessed, so thanks, Mom, I love you. Um, 
and then about my own kids. They're all here today, all five of them. Um, my son in love and my daughter in love as well. And I just praise the Lord for all of you guys. And um, when I was a teenager or a little girl, I guess, you always have the big aspirations of being a mom. You have your little cabbage patch kid. I had an original, by the way. Little cabbage patch kid, and you push him in the stroller and you pretend to feed him a bottle. But when I had my own kids, I had no idea what that was going to mean to me and um, how it would affect me. My children became my world. Sorry, honey. Um, Mark came alongside, but my children became my world. And um, as the Bible says, like the mother bear, she will defend her kids. And I, that's me. I have a veracity for my children. And the best part <clears throat> is that they all know Jesus. I know there are so many moms that suffer every day just praying for their children to find the Lord or to come back to the Lord or to make better choices. And um, I, as a woman, as a mom, have never had to do that. I've never had to desperately pray for my children to seek Jesus because they always have. And I just i am so thankful for you guys. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to have such great kids. And... Um, just love on your kids today if you can. Call them. Moms, call your kids before they even call you. Because it's better to be the mom than to say, Happy Mother's Day to a mom. It's better to, to give it back. Um, so two stories that I want to talk about in the Bible. You all knew that I was preaching, right? Um, the first one is of Moses. My favorite mom story in the Bible. You know, Moses' mom was faced with giving him up. Somebody tried to take one of my kids away. I, you know, you just, no way would you take my kids away from me. But she had to to save his life. And so she did. She gave him away. She put him in that river, not knowing. But she trusted that the Lord was going to protect him. And little did she know that the exact same, very same day, God gave him right back to her. What an amazing miracle. She trusted the Lord to give him up. And the Lord gave him right back. Just beautiful. The other one is not so sweet. It's of uh, Jesus' mom. And how she had to watch him be beaten and mocked and spat at. And she wasn't able to protect him. And so she watched as her son was completely ripped to shreds. But she still trusted the Lord. And then in the end, she got him back too. He was alive again, and it is for that reason that we moms can celebrate. Jesus came back for us, and he's here for our children, and um, just, yeah, so happy Mother's Day. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much, so much, so much for kids, for allowing moms to be moms, and um, Father, that you demonstrated your love for moms when you not only gave Moses back to his mom, but you gave yourself back to your mom. And in doing so, you gave yourself to us. And uh, I just pray that um, everybody watching today can just hang on to Jesus. I know this world is upside down right now, but you're not. You're the same as you were then, as you are now, as you will be forever. You don't get shaken, Lord. And so we just thank you and trust you and um, just give this day to you. Just bless all the families at home. Help them to have a great day. And um, just thank you, Jesus. In your name I pray. Kristen. So Mark had me go first because then he was going to have our kids say something and he knew I'd be just a mess. So <laughs> here you go. Well, good morning. I guess I don't usually talk in front of a mic in front of people, but since there's nobody here, it's not so bad. So I just found this online and thought it was kind of cool. Um, it says, there's no love like a mother's. Her heart is filled with care. With Christ as her example, her Savior's love she'll share. A mother's love is endless, not changing for all time. When needed by her children, a mother's love will shine. God bless the special mothers. God bless them, everyone, for all their tears and heartaches and special work they've done. When, God, when days on earth are over, a mother's love lives on. Through many generations, God's blessed Blessings on each one. Be thankful for our mothers who love with higher love. 
from power God has given and strength from above. So, happy Mother's Day to my mom. I love her very much, and my grandmas and all the other moms out there. Have a great day and um, spend some time um, enjoying family. So, thanks. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to share some scripture with you from Proverbs 31, and I'm going to tell you a little story. Um, She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Many women do noble things but you surpass them all. Now, I'll tell you a little story. Um, when I was probably six, we, uh, we used to go to a vacation Bible school at a church in Isle, and uh, one night everyone was leaving, and almost everyone was gone, and my mom couldn't find me, and I knew where I was, but she had no idea where I was. So she and... Willow and Tristan were searching desperately for me, and I was just across the street in the in the church's rec hall thing. And so when she finally found me, she was she rejoiced and was just weeping. And <laughs> so I just thought it's kind of cool. Jesus, mothers are a picture of Jesus, because. When he's desperately searching for his kids, and he finds them, he rejoices. That's all I got. I'm supposed to be able to follow that up from either of my brothers, but um, I'll say good morning too. Um, I am always up here doing music, but I remember that my mom said when they were pregnant with me that mom and dad sing to me all the time and that that's why I can sing. So thank you, mom, that, <laughs> um, that you guys sang to me so that I can use this. But um, I all of a sudden have three very dear friends in my life that don't have their moms here on earth with them anymore. And um, it just really makes me realize how thankful, even more so, that I am that I have my mom to call 24 7 when there's a chipmunk under my oven and I'm crying hysterically and don't know what to do. And when I can't figure out how to cut open a chicken, I just call mom, whatever. But, um, And then what mom said, too, about having the generational um, just trust in the Lord and how she's so thankful that we know the Lord. And I remember the day that I accepted Christ into my heart, I was standing in our first house in our living room staring at our fireplace. And I don't know, all of a sudden I just wanted to have Jesus in my heart. And so mom was curling her hair in the kitchen or in the kitchen, in the bathroom, (laughs) and I just ran in there. I was like, okay, mom, what do I say? What do I say? And then she told me, and then I ran back to the living room by the fireplace, and I said it, and then I ran back. I said, oh, I forgot the last part, and whatever, and so I'm sure my mom remembers it differently than I do, but that's how I remember um, my first day as a Christian, and I'm just so, so thankful for the way that she raised us and that I've never had to doubt God's faithfulness just because of the foundation that my parents have instilled in us. And when something goes wrong or something's bad, it's we never get mad at the Lord. It's just we know that he's always faithful. And so there's a song on the radio right now that I really like, and so I'm just going to sing it. <laughs> I love you, Lord. Oh, your kindness never fails me. 
all my days I am held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I bow my head I will sing of the goodness of God and all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so, so good, oh, with every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You have never left my side. I love you as a father. I love you as a friend. I have seen the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good, oh, with every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful, all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I will sing of the goodness of God oh I will sing of the goodness of God Thank you, Willow. Talk about hard to follow. Well, good morning once again. I know we've all been giving you a greeting this morning. I would like to greet you too. Happy Mother's Day, all you mothers. Happy birthday to my, happy Mother's Day to my beautiful wife. See, just looking at her, I, I get flustered. Anyway, I just want to give a shout out to Pastor and his wife, as they're, you may or may not know, they're away on vacation with family, and the Robinsons, I have to say hi to Mike and Noel and all the kids, as they are having some beautiful time together right now, um, so enjoy it. So in his absence, Pastor has asked that I would share, oh, we just lost our three listeners, no, just kidding. <laughs> I'm going to share it today. Um, bear with me because I am not pastor. I am just Mark, and I'm just, uh, just going to share some thoughts of Mother's Day. And also we're going we're gonna to look into God's Word a little bit. And I'm going to try really hard to keep it nice and short. And the beauty of online streaming is you can just shut me off whenever you are tired of me. So hang in there. Um, when I think of mothers, uh, key words come to mind qualities or characteristics, if you will. I think there were, there's nine of them, and I think they'll be very familiar. You'll be very uh, familiar with them. I will list them in order. I guess it could be in order. First one is love. Mother's love, like no other love. Joy. Peace. Patience. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Of course, these are the fruits of the Spirit found in Galatians 5.22. And I just think mothers are just given, are blessed, they're graced with so much 
uh, more of the fruits of the Spirit, in just in, and especially with raising children. Maybe not always when dealing with their husbands, especially when it comes to patients, but uh, they really are blessed with that. Um, a part in Scripture that I like, um, I like Solomon's writings in Proverbs. And this is just a thought I had. I don't know if you agree with me or not. That's okay. Um, I just like how he refers in, in chapter 2, he's talking about the value of wisdom and how he, re he refers to wisdom as her. He refers to it as being her, a female. And I'm just going to read it here, if you don't mind. Second chapter, verses 1 through 5. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasure, then you will understand and fear the Lord and find the knowledge of God. I think that's a just a beautiful passage. One more I'd like to share is in uh, the third chapter, starting with verse 13 through 15. Happy is a man who finds wisdom and a man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver, and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. I just think that is so descriptive of mothers. Their beauty, they are precious. I'm going to give you three perspectives of mine and of, of many people, of mothers. This is kind of mine. The very first one I just want to share was um, I am very grateful just to have been brought up in a Christian home by a very godly mother. Being the youngest of five, um, my mother was well-seasoned, if you will, by the time that I came along. I think my closest sibling was seven years older than me. So mom had it, had it down pretty good. Um, and did I mention, when I was mentioning the fruits of the Spirit, I know I said patience, but in other translations it's called long-suffering. Did I mention that one? <laughs> I think my mom, uh, I think I might have helped her with that one. Um, love you, Mom. Thank you. Second perspective is, um, of a mother is just, I've been blessed with just a wonderful, beautiful wife who's already shared this morning a little bit about her children, and I agree with everything she said, and just um, about raising up children just to love and follow after Jesus. And parents hope for that. They pray for that, and uh, that is rich. So I'm very, very grateful for that. And the third perspective is kind of yet to come that I'm looking forward to is uh, <laughs> the day that our kids, and I'm not trying to prod them here or anything, but the day that our kids um, begin families of their own and get to raise children and we get to sit back and watch, uh, watch them do that. And uh, I just love, um, I love the seasons and I love how God designed them and, and how they also, we have seasons of our life. And um, these three perspectives, of course, are, are seasons of our life that are just so rich. Um, they're beautiful. So when I think about moms, I think about beautiful flowers. I think of beautiful gardens. When you think of beautiful gardens, you just think of all the brilliant colors. And uh, I want to just point out these flowers here that Cameo brought today. They are, they are for our mothers. Um, from Sherry and my mom, Phyllis. And then I think Tristan brought uh, a bouquet or whatever you call it here for his mother. So thank you for that. So we got a little splash of color here, but um, I don't know if you ever just stop to look closely at flowers and how intricate they are. And just the, it's, it just screams God's handiwork. I mean, my wife has kind of taught me that and, and my kids to some degree too. Look at this, Dad. Just look at this. Yeah, yeah, it's a flower. No, look at it, Dad, and, uh, and look at it deeper. And it's just so amazing, so delicate, so intricate. You see beauty and you see tenderness. Really, you see all the finer workings of God's creation. 
of his, of his handiwork. So as I was pondering what to share with you, um, thinking about Mother's Day and how that might relate and uh, to tie, try to tie something in with the Bible, all these thoughts of gardening and beauty and creation, it's kind of brought me right back to Genesis in the beginning. Um, I don't know about you, but when I study the Bible, I just love to go to the New Testament because I had some, somewhere in my mind that, okay, I'm a follower of Jesus. I'm living by the New Covenant, um, so therefore I should study the New Testament. Well, the New Testament is wonderful. It is great, but you can't have Revelation without Genesis. You can't have anything. You can't have the cross or anything without Genesis. So Genesis, therefore, um, is just such a pillar of our Christianity, the building blocks of, of who we are as people, as his followers, as his children. Um, Genesis gives us an amazing look into the character of God, of who he is. Just in, if you study it and really look at it, 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 it just can blow your mind. Um, so as I mentioned, it's our foundation, um, and it answers so many questions that we may have. I will list a few here. Um, questions like, where did we come from? Well, go to Genesis, and God is going to talk about that. What is our purpose? I think all Christians at some point in their life ask that question. I think we know what, what we're supposed to be doing, but really, what is our purpose? Why, why did he make us? And then a third question might be, okay, this is all great, but why do we live in such a broken world? I think the world feels pretty broken right now, doesn't it? We haven't been able to meet in this church as a, as a body of believers for a very long time. And yes, that, that is due to a, living in a broken world. Sin is responsible for that. So like I say, just to name a few, um, we're going to keep this short. We're just going to dive right into this. Um, we're only going to be able to scratch the surface, really, of the depths of the creation account. It is so rich. You could spend literally weeks upon weeks upon weeks studying it. And you're thinking, well, no, it's just a story. In six days, God created everything and created man and woman and, and on and on and on. But you got to really stop and take that extra look at that flower, that extra handiwork of God, and see and ask the questions. Why did he do that? That's when it really becomes beautiful and things really come to light. So turn with me, if you would like, if you will, to Genesis 1.1. I'm going to read the first five chapters, then we're going to kind of skip over the next four days and uh, continue after that. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light, and God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning were the first day. Right there we have proof, and we're not going to get into debates of, was it really six days of creation? I say yes. There's proof right in this. There was morning, there was evening, and there was morning the first day. A literal first day of creation. We won't spend much time on that. Second, second day, God prepares the expanse around the earth, all of the water. Um, let's see, what do we got? Third day, dry land and plants. Fourth day, he, he makes the sun, the moon, and the stars to govern and to separate each day, morning and night. Day five, we see sea creatures and flying creatures, in other words, the fish and the birds, and then comes day six. I like day six. This is where God really pours it out. I mean, I can't imagine even what, what his creation looked like. Um, I mean, we can look around now and see it, but I mean the purity of the original form of everything. And then, then comes day six. So let's jump ahead 
to verse 26 and 27, and then I'm going to skip down to 31. Verse 26 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Let's jump down to verse 31. Da, 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 da. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. What did he say? It was good. It was very good. I love that. I love that part. Did you know that God loves gardening? Well, it's kind of how he started everything, was in the garden. Um, he planted... Um, he planted a garden within his creation. This garden was beauty beyond compare. We can't even fathom it. Think of the most beautiful gardens you've ever seen, and it will pale, I guarantee you. So he created this place as a, as a sanctuary, a place for him to, to dwell, his spirit to be there. But in the middle of that garden, now God created creation, but in the middle of that he created this garden, the Garden of Eden, and in the middle of that, he created two special trees. The first tree is the tree of life. The second tree is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. After the garden, God created Adam from the dust of the earth and breathed life into him. Can you picture that? God just taking, first of all, he created the dust and the dirt, and then he just forms this man and breathes life into him. Made in what? In what likeness? In what image? The image of God. God created Adam to have fellowship with him, to love him and to care for the garden. That kind of answers one of those questions earlier about why are we here? God created Adam to have fellowship with him. He longed for that. He longed to be in the garden with Adam, to walk through the beauty that he created, and to love him. So in doing all of that, um, as a test of, dis of obedience, excuse me, God gave um, every tree in the garden to eat from. All the different fruit trees Adam could partake of and enjoy, and that was all great, except... This is kind of the test part. He said, you can't, uh, you can't have from the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil. So why the rule about this tree? Why did, why did God establish this right off the bat? Why a test? God wanted Adam to love his creator out of pure desire. Not because he was forced to. Adam was given choice or sometimes we call it free will. So just like us as earthly parents, we, uh, we long and, and we hope and we pray that um, our children will grow up and, and later on want to spend time with us, and to desire that, that it's something they, they enjoy. Same goes for God. He just really wanted Adam to want to be there in his presence with him and walk with him in the coolness of the garden. So in addition to the garden God created um, for Adam to enjoy, he brought Adam his first job. What? I thought the garden was pure and holy and perfect and what's with this job? I thought there was no work, no sweat, no toil. Well, I don't think it was sweat or toil. Um, his first job, of course, as you can read uh, in God's word, was um, to name all these really unique and beautiful animals that God has created. So he lines them all up, and they, they come past him, I suppose, one by one, two by two. And Adam's checking them out and looking at this one, and I'm going to call you a, an anteater. <laughs> I don't know. How did he come up with the names? 
How did he name all these animals? These are questions that you might have. Um, kind of a big job. And as Adam is doing that, he's also noticing that there's a difference between them. There are male and there are female. And he knows this, of course, because why? Well, because God created him in his own image. And we've got to remember that, that Adam was made in God's very own image. So his mind, Adam's mind, was brilliant. I'm talking brilliant. I can't even fathom what brilliant is. But it was pure. It was holy. It was the mind of God himself. And I'm pretty sure he was using more than 10% of his brain capacity. I think that's where we're, our common uh, capacity is, isn't it, around 10%? Man, I would love to have uh, Adam's uh, capacity there. So I wonder why, why um, what was the purpose in this? It, just as, as you're reading the account, you should always stop and just ask those questions and uh, dig into it a little further and pray, and God might reveal that for you. Um, so I wondered that during this process of looking at the animals and trying to decide and, and come up with a name for them, if it was so that Adam could see that he was unique, that he was not an anteater, he was not a billy goat, he was not one of the animals. Um, and I wonder at that point, as he saw that there were animals of likeness, male and female, he could see that there was a difference there. I wondered if at that point God had him realize that he was alone. There was no one else like him in creation. So with that, let's move on down to the second chapter of Genesis, to verse 18. If you want to follow along with me. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. One of the ground the Lord God formed, every beast of the field and every bird of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all the cattle to all the birds of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a comparable helper. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall over Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman. And he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She should be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, and man, the man and his wife were not ashamed. Wow. Wow. God said, it is not good to be alone. Adam needed, um, he needed a, a suitable helper, someone to be with him. The Bible tells us that Adam spoke and revealed his understanding of the importance and how Eve was created from part of him and how this connection related to the very first marriage. A man and a woman becoming one person. I don't know if I mentioned earlier, I think I failed to mention in, back in verse, uh, in the first chapter. If you just let me jump back, I hate to do that, but it was very pivotal. pivotal. Uh, oh yes, God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. I just wanted to point out, because it's very important, that I think that is the very first place it is in the Bible, but he is referring to the Trinity. That's pretty cool, okay? Kind of undisputable. So why I brought that up is because as God created Adam, he created Eve, and they become one. It's almost another sign, another picture of the Trinity with God being the head over them. I just think that's a beautiful uh, 
beautiful analogy. So I promised I was gonna keep this short. We're only scratching the surface. Um, we're gonna probably stop here, but we are truly only getting started. We, uh, we have so much to, to, to cover, and I really do hope that uh, by, by chance, maybe we can get a chance to further this in the, in the near future, if that works out. If not, please read on. Um, what I'd like to do next is go to the third chapter of Genesis, and that is, of course, the fall of man. So I'm going to leave you with something to think about and to chew over. Is, uh, we know that Eve was in the garden, and she happened by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and Satan meets her there, the serpent, as the Bible describes it as. And she is deceived. She is tricked. She is tricked into disobeying and taking of its fruit. But here's my question to you. Was Adam deceived? I want you to think about that. Think that over. See what you come up with. So we are going to stop there. I'm going to invite Willow to come up right now. And her and I are once again going to sing together just a short, probably the verse, first verse of a song that you all know and love. With that, we'll, we'll close in prayer and uh, just really enjoy the day today. You mothers, husbands, children, just spend, spend great time together. Um, love the Lord, love each other. We'll meet again next week. Father, we just thank you so much for today. And I do give thanks for mothers, all mothers, just the beauty all that we can learn from them, and we as children have learned from them. Father, just bless them all in a special way today. Father, we just thank you for the moment we could share looking into your word and to taking it all back to the beginning, back to the foundation, back to the pillars of who we are and where we come from. Father, just uh, we just thank you for that. So I pray that, Lord, that your word today stirred us a little bit and just maybe brought up some questions. Maybe it answered some. Um, maybe it just brought us back to just a beautiful place of unbrokenness, unity, and fellowship with you. Father, I pray that we are seeking that each day, individually and as families, as we meet around meals in our quiet times. Lord, just uh, continue to move us, continue to grow us and shape us and form us to your will, to your perfect, perfect will. So we just thank you for today, Lord, and for your awesome love. And we just ask all this now in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>